So today I have to talk about one of the dumbest investment ideas I've ever heard of. And in hindsight is always 2020, but I probably did make videos about this. It's Marvel PMGs. So you would see these sets go on sale on Dave and Adams all the time before the big hype. I remember 2017, they were always massively undiscounted. You could buy cases for 50% off, 40% off, some insane amount of money. They're always trying to move these Marvel cards. Um, Marvel cards, you know, one of the crazy things about PMGs is that was a very popular set when I was a kid for basketball cards, right? PMGs, jambalayas, right? And these cards went to astronomical prices recently. And they recently, in, in an auction, they've lost 90 to 95% of their value. No joke. I was watching um, another guy's video and he lost $10,000 at auction. And he, most of the stuff that he was trying to sell and flip was either F1 or Marvel PMGs. Here's my point about PMGs. And I'll try to make it very clear because nobody wanted them for a long time. There's a reason no one wanted them. Okay, it wasn't like these things were cheap because people, they had value, they had diamonds in them, they had any inherent value to them. They were not expensive. In 2017, I remember seeing them pop. They were so undesired that even when the things were going on sale, nobody bought them. So they would have to go on sale multiple times for less and less money each time and you know i was thinking hey maybe this would be a good deal this would be a good buy but it never even crossed my mind that it would be until certain influencers i mean you probably know them they started pumping the f1 the pmgs and the marvel and you know marvel movies i find very repetitive you know there's no creativity there's no i mean the storyline is actually sometimes ripped off you know <laughs> it's in comics which makes sense, but at the same time, hey, like my point about the PMGs is they're completely hyped. They were completely hyped. And this is actually a very interesting case study of how much, how much something can go up in price and then how fastly, how fast it can collapse. The faster it goes up in price, you know, just like fame, the more famous somebody becomes, the other, the collapse will be even more devastating on the way down. So, PMGs, they have significantly lost value. Many PMGs have lost 90 to 95% of their value if they go to auction. More importantly, people like the guy, the video I was watching, the guy who lost $10,000, uh, people in the comments are asking, why didn't you diamond hands it? Why didn't you hold it? He can't. There are many reasons people can't hold their cards today. They need cash. Cash will always be king, but especially during a recession especially when you have bills to pay, especially when the grocery bill is 10, 15, 20% more, especially when your electricity, your water bill, your uh, cable bill, your phone bill is going up in price. This stuff is devastating. You know, if everyone could hold, then the prices would be stable because no one would sell the price of like, oh, this price is too low. Who, who wants to buy something at $1,000 and then sell it at, let's call it $100? Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. But the people who are doing this, and we see auction after auction, private sale after private sale, they have to do it. They have to do it because they don't have a choice. Rent is due. Grocery bills you have to pay for. Your kids need some tuition. They need some gas money. Whatever it is, people in this current economy need to sell. And this is very harmful to the hobby. I feel in my gut that that's a very bad experience. When you buy something for $1,000 and you're happy to get it and you thought you got a really good deal at $1,000 and then later you get to sell for $100, that person is not going to stick with the hobby. They're not going to collect more PMGs when they do have money. They have an adverse experience, no matter how positive they can be. And this is one thing, um, I was watching another channel, a AIH sports and it kind of makes it clear that like this is something that I have in my mind too the positivity right to bring more people to the hobby ain't going to help those people don't got no money 
Nobody got no money right now, guys. Like, what, what's going on? You just have more bodies with no money? Have you ever been to a card show? The card shows are dead now, by the way. Uh, Dallas was a really bad show because no one had money. Like, <laughs> they don't understand the core concept, right? Uh, but when you go to a show as a vendor, you need people to have money to buy what you're vending. It doesn't matter if it's sports cards, it doesn't matter if it's Pokemon cards, you need the people with money. You know, there's been anime conventions I've gone to and uh, Jessica's vended at where there's a lot of people and they're all little kids, but none of them got no money. They're like teenagers with no money. And you might just be like, wow, there's a lot of people there. It looks very big, but you didn't make no money. Like the people with money right now, they see better opportunities in real estate. They see better opportunities in stocks and bonds, which are very low right now. Crypto, Bitcoin, as recording this video, is still around hovering around 19,000. So if you're into Bitcoin, would you rather have a Bitcoin where you think it's a really good price? Or would you rather have a PMG mark? No, hell no. You gotta have the Bitcoin, that's what you're into. So I think a lot of the positivity is going to seep into negativity. And no matter how many new people you bring, it's not going to help because those new people don't have no money because the government is not pumping out free. I mean, it is, yes, with student loan forgiveness. I mean, yes, uh, there could be a burst of people buying Pokemon cards and sports cards with their student loans forgiven now, even though it would be unwise for them to do so. You know how people are, right, with their money. Um, yeah, I think the PMGs for Marvel, it's a very, very tough lesson that you guys have to learn is when a influencer is telling you to buy something and they, they definitely own a lot of this item that they bought really cheap, they're dumping it on you, you dumbasses. Like, I mean, come on, think about what's happening. They bought it cheap, they hyped it, now it's supposedly expensive. They're making videos about how expensive it is, and then when it goes to auction, no one can afford it or want it. So who's left holding the bag? And this is one of my biggest complaints about many uh, big content creators, is they seem to do this very often. And the, 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 I can prove, actually, you know what? I will prove this to you. I will prove this point to you. In the beginning, it was basketball. Yeah, we agree, basketball was the sport. Then they moved to football. Okay, cool. Not every basketball fan will also like football, but there is some type of, you know, there is a lot of people who like both. I like both. All right, cool. Then we moved into F1. Like I like F1, but I just watched the documentary. I'm not gonna wake up at not seven in the morning to watch the race or five in the morning. It's, in it's interesting. I will watch the Netflix documentary that comes out once every season is over but I'm not going to wake up that early, nor am I that interested in F1. Then it became Marvel. Oh no, no, then it became soccer. So no, it was um, football, basketball, baseball. Baseball was extremely boring to me, so I would never do that. And then it became soccer, and it became hockey, and then they ran out of sports, so they moved into, well, and then they went to F1. Then they went to um, Marvel. Just think about, how many people do you know in real life who is knowledgeable or even a fan of all these different sports? And then Poke did some, a lot of them, like Sasha T went to Pokemon with uh, Melee Pops and Car Kahuna, right? Like, just think about it. How many of these people, and you watch their videos, how many of people do you know is actively, you know, collecting all these different things? I can tell you that it cannot be a lot because at the end of the day these people are fake i get it oh i love basketball okay cool i love football football is my second sport or basketball is my second sport what kind of idiot or what type of person has enough time to watch football basketball soccer hockey baseball learn about pokemon maybe do some Yu Gi Oh and magic on the side then definitely do marvel pmgs and then do star wars Has anyone met a person who's an expert in all these fields? But that's what they did. They went from football, basketball to football, from football to baseball, to baseball to hockey, hockey to NASCAR F1. Uh, a lot of them went wrestling and stuff. I get the point that it might be somewhat interesting, 
but there's no way that you're an expert in all these things, right? Um, I mean, Jeff Wilson's just reading off a script, apparently, and if the ba the base baseball player is not on the right team, he doesn't even notice. No one, nobody knows in the script. No one, Jeff does not notice when he reads it. No one in the editing room notices it. Nobody knows because no one watches baseball. I don't watch baseball, so I didn't know either. I was like, oh, who is that guy? I don't even know who the guy is. But he said it was the wrong team, and it was kind of hilarious because I guess it's a famous baseball player. So if you watch baseball and you love baseball, that's you, you know, oh, something's wrong. So multiple people in Jeff's team, the script writer, Jeff, and then the editor, and then probably some other people too watching, they probably watch the video before it's released. Nobody caught it because nobody at that team is interested in baseball. So anyway, that's kind of where I am with this is like, buy what you love. You know what I'm buying right now? I'm buying a lot of Fire Emblem. I, I did a live stream. This is the most expensive Fire Emblem card I just got in. So that's a beautiful card. I pull all the cards. I buy boxes because I cannot buy singles or I don't know, there's not enough boxes to open. It's a dead card game. It's been dead for at least a few years now. I don't really remember. I didn't play it. I only got into it recently. And I have a lot of the most valuable cards in the game, but I'm collecting, I'm opening boxes. It's real enjoyment, because I love Fire Emblem. It's one of my favorite games. Outside Pokemon, it's Fire Emblem. I, I've spent a lot of money on Fire Emblem Heroes, the gacha game, before I started playing Freight. If Freight Grand Order had, had a game like this, yeah, I, I'm definitely buying into it. I am not pretending that I love, love hockey. I don't know any soccer players, nor am my interest in a World Cup. It's impossible for any adult to have that much free time that they can watch all these sports all at one go and be an expert, supposed expert in all these things. It's just not realistic. Anyway, and then and the, the worst is the Marvel stuff. None of these efforts had any interest in Marvel. And then they were like, oh, Marvel movies. No, this is like, uh, how can I explain this? If you ask a comic book person, which would you rather have? A comic book of Spider-Man or a PMG of Spider-Man? You know, there's that gold PMG where Jeff is saying it's worth $2 million and $2 million. It ain't worth $200,000. It won't, ain't worth, 20, it's, what, it's worth whatever you sell it for because it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Until you sell it, it's worth $0. That's how... Everything else works, right? Anyway, bye guys.